Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jenny, and I'm a nature preschool teacher. And if you aren't a part of our community yet, hi, hello, make sure that you subscribe so then you can stay up to date with all of the fun things our community has to offer. I have been thinking a lot lately about my thoughts and how limiting sometimes they are. And it's been an interesting ride for me to really reflect on this because I feel like we as teachers are always reflecting and always thinking about how we're going to adjust or change or redefine who we are as teachers. And this is definitely my journey right now is that I'm in that redefining um, place. And I have been realizing a lot about how my thoughts are limiting my abilities to lead and are changing the ways that I feel about the natural world. Um, and it's really interesting. It's like really weird that that's a thought that I even have and that's something that is like bothering me. But one of the thoughts that I made up in my head that does not serve me anymore and I'm so grateful for it is this thought that children can't bird watch, that children can't sit still, that children can't do an activity and enjoy an activity like bird watching because of their lack of self-regulation skills. And I told myself that, and I told myself that that wasn't something I wanted to ever do with kids. And that wasn't something that I thought was of value for them. And that I would rather do something that they were interested in and take bird watching away. And it's really interesting to think about it, like really think about that thought that was in my mind because what I was failing to remember is that bird watching doesn't have to be what we think it should look like or what it traditionally looks like for an adult where we're sitting we're watching we're quiet and that we're just in awe of the natural world and we know how to use binoculars <laughs> like honestly how many times have you like helped a child use binoculars and then they're still like, these don't work. <laughs> so we have to take that and break that down. We don't have to think of bird watching in this traditional way that adults do it. Instead, we have to think about how are we going to lead bird watching activities that actually serve young children and actually make them want to bird watch and see the wonder of the birds. And so this video is going to cover that. I'm really excited to share this with you guys because it has really helped me to think about how I want to even be a teacher and how I wanna show up with the students when it comes to bird watching. So if you like this video, as always, give it a thumbs up. It helps me know that this is the style of video you want to see more of. And just like, hey, hi, thanks for giving me a like. <laughs> Likes are free, baby. Subscriptions are free too. Ah, so cool. I have heard from bird watchers that you have to sit still and you have to really be looking at the sky. And if you work with young children, you know that that is really difficult to do all the time, like for five minutes. <laughs> and maybe a child that you have is like super focused and able to self-regulate and like, yay, they have that skill. Some children don't. And I have been in a classroom where I had both of those types of students and I had to honor that. I had to know that some of them weren't going to be able to sit still and some of them could. So how could I offer a bird watching experience that is okay for everyone? And what I found was that I don't have to sit down with every student and we don't have to do this in a large group activity. It can be just me modeling how to look for birds and how to, you know, explore birds when we're just sitting there watching birds. So I like to do that. I like to sit in my space and just model looking at birds. Oftentimes children come over and then they sit with me and we can watch the birds together. And it's just an enjoyable space. It's not this overwhelming thing that I feel like, oh geez, like we have to be perfect and we have to be quiet. Once I let that go, Oh my gosh, I enjoyed bird watching like 100% more because I wasn't feeling like I had to control them and be like, sit still, stop moving, stop talking. Shh, we have to be quiet. You're going to scare the birds. All of those like negative things that we don't want to bring to our class and bring to our children that we care for. 
So when I could sit and model how to sit, children came over. I was calm. If I'm regulated, they're going to be more regulated. They need to learn from me how to regulate. So that's why I'm calm when I'm sitting and watching. And I like that so much more for myself when I am bird watching. Something else I always think about is what my intention is when it comes to bird watching. Is my intention to build regulation skills, focusing skills, or is my intention to bring light into birds and bring light for children to learn about birds, you know? So once I can reflect on that and really think about it, I feel so much better and so much more in a space that makes me understand why I want to do this with kids and how I can do it with them. If I'm trying to do a regulation tool or a regulation activity, totally fine. I can still do that in a bird watching experience and encourage children to like, like calm their bodies for a second and just listen to birds and count the different noises they hear totally do that but I don't always have to fall back on that when I'm bird watching so that's why I like to do things like play-based activities that keep children engaged in their learning instead of like actively passively learning and just watching watching is perfect I've honestly I feel like I'm dishing watching nature and that is not what I'm trying to do I think we can still do those activities. Those are activities I love to do, but they're not going to always be my fallback. Like they're not going to be my only way to help children bird watch. Those are definitely things that I love, but they're not my only things. So one thing that I really love to do is really think about the bird calls that we hear in our area. And I remember as a child, I loved, I loved, I lived for bird watching. Not in the sense that we're talking about today though. I lived for listening to birds. Like I didn't care where they were. I didn't care what their names were. I just loved hearing them. I would wake up early, honestly, and I would have my window open because it would be like a warm summer night and or day. And I would listen to the chirps and I was so excited to get out of bed because I heard them so excited to welcome me out of bed. And this is an experience that we want children to have, right? We want them to really listen to the birds and get to know the different noises in their place. But it's not always going to be that sitting space that I told you about. It can be sometimes. Like I said, I do it. But it can also look like this. So one thing I like to do to make it play-based is to offer children to pretend to be a bird that we might see. So some common birds that we like to pretend to be are crows because we hear them all the time. Robins, another common bird in our area, and chickadees. We hear them all the time in our space. So we all turn into chickadees, robins, or crows. And I run off. I hide somewhere where I can still see the kids. That's important. And the kids have to wait for me to call. That builds self-regulation skills, doesn't it? Yes. So I will make the bird call. So if I'm being a crow, I'll be like, caw, caw, caw. And when the kids hear that, they start to say caw, caw, caw back and they run and try to find me. Sometimes I'm hidden really well behind like a tree or in some ferns. Other times I'm just waiting on the trail for them to join me. Another thing that you can do is like same idea, but a little bit different where you run off, you stay on the trail and you caw, caw, caw. And if you have another teacher, the teacher can send one child at a time. So again, that builds that focusing skill of listening to like me calling and also waiting their turn in order for them to run to the teacher, the other teacher. So I like those activities because we're able to engage in learning about the different noises we hear around. The kids start doing those games inside of our classroom where we'll have like a family of robins and the only way they communicate to each other is like saying, um, pretty bird, pretty bird, pretty bird, and then pointing to different things. So it's fun to see that and how just that simple activity can inspire and ripple in their learning and their play. Did you like that hair flip? Yeah. It's my fashion look. It's not, but we're just going with it. Another thing I hear bird watchers talk a lot about, and I am a bird watcher, like not an avid one, but like a very much of a beginner that just 
likes watching birds. And one thing that they always talk about is the movement of the birds and studying the movement and understanding how birds move their bodies and how different birds move their bodies in different ways. So we can definitely do that by sitting on, I don't know, the ground or the trail. We can definitely do that activity. But again, where's that fun, hands-on stuff? How are we engaging those kinesthetic learners? We're not. So what can we do instead to make it play-based? What I like to do is I like to study the bird for a second, five, 10 seconds or longer, depending on what the child is like and who I'm working with or just offer that experience for the whole group and then they can get up when they feel good. But studying the bird and then moving like the bird. And a bird that is so fun to watch and is in so many city parks is my lovely Robin. Those birds are like literally my favorite things to watch because they stay on the ground and you can watch them hopping around and then like taking their heads <laughs> and banging it into the ground and finding worms and pulling those out. So then we turn into the robins and we move our bodies like the robin. And we think about how they're like moving their heads, how they're jumping their bodies. And then we start talking about why are they jumping? great experience for us to start storytelling about why robins jump on the ground. The reason is because like at least what I've heard and I totally might be wrong so please leave a comment if I am wrong but the birds like to jump on the ground like that because it uh that worms underneath it feel that vibration and they feel like it's raining so they start to come up out of their little little nook in the garden and then they'll come up and then the bird will be able to eat them. So I love sharing that with the kids. If they're interested in it and wondering about it, I will definitely offer that experience to them and talk a little bit about storytelling about birds. Bird watchers also tell me that we can study the birds by looking at their color of their fur, <laughs> their fur, <laughs> looking at the color of their feathers and their size of their bodies, right? So not only are we studying their movements, we're also studying what they look like. So bird watchers sometimes will look at guidebooks and really, really think about how there's like a line here for some birds and how their chest is a different color and really get to know what the birds are called and how to identify them. So when they are off on their trail, they can do that. But again, that's a great activity. And I love doing that with kids, but how am I going to make it play-based? I can take those photos of the birds from the guidebooks, from the, like if I laminate a picture of a bird, and then I can put that on a table in my classroom. That way children can come whenever they want and look at the birds and study them and get to know the coloring. Oh, they can also use drawing utensils in order to draw the bird. So they can study the bird on the picture and then bring it one step further and they can definitely just like draw the bird and this is a fun thing that they are drawn to do i love offering this for students because it gets them to really think about the bird and the way that they look the last way we can bring bird watching to life is through inviting the birds to our area and our homes and our schools and our city parks whatever that is for you Bird watchers often say like you should go to different city parks, different wildlife areas, different areas in your city to really understand the birds in your space and understand where they like to hang out. But that's sometimes hard for us, especially if we are city dwellers. We can't always just go with our young children all over the city to different parks to bird watch. So we can bring them to us. And I love making bird feeders with kids. I think this is something that they love to do too because they will start to take ownership over their bird feeders and notice when maybe the bird seed is low and then they'll go out and refill it or they might say like we need to make another bird feeder and then they start to engage with the birds too that are visiting the bird feeder as well. I just love it. I could go on about different ways that we can bring birding to child-led stuff and play-based. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, as always, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me, that helps you, that helps us and our community grow. 
If you aren't and you haven't already, subscribe, my baby. What are you doing? You can be a part of our community and we would love to have you here. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day, whatever that looks like for you all. And I'll see you next time on another edition of how we're going to bring kids outside and empower ourselves to go outside too. I'll see you guys later. Bye!